Will you please welcome Miss Catherine Hellman? Good evening. Now, we've never met. No, I've never had the pleasure. No, or, I, but I feel like I know you because I've been watching Soap and Who's the Boss and everything. It's wonderful. Oh, thanks. And I feel like I was reading the notes and you, you did a quote that said, uh, as an actress, you were a late bloomer, but I never remember not seeing you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's nice to hear. Well, I met, I've, I've always been acting, but I suppose a late bloomer as far as a visible career goes, because as you well know, you worked many, many, many years. Oh. And then when we get television, the whole world opens up to you. And there's something pretty fantastic about it. I think when you get off a plane and you're in the Fiji Islands and people say, oh, you're funny. Oh. It's amazing, oh, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> It's incredible. <laughs> and but wonderful. You came from New York, though. Yes, uh-huh. So you're a New York actress. Yes, I am. Yeah. And uh, when I first came here, I could not get a part playing comedy. I couldn't even get a reading for a comedy. Because they said, oh, no, she's from New York, and she plays all those queens and people like that and Shakespeare. So she couldn't possibly be funny. So how did it happen? How did they, finally, how did they get you into soap? Well, uh, a director, Jay Sandwich, who now directs The Cosby Show, had seen me do a play in New York where I was funny. And so when this script of soap came along, my agent sent it to me and I said, well, it's the most demented thing I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it'll ever get on the air, but I love the character of Jessica. I'd like to have a shot at it. So they brought me out and I read with 250 women. Oh. And the lady that created the show, Susan Harris, said to me, well, you are the most demented thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I made her laugh, so I got the job. Now, has it worked in reverse? Now that you, you've done soap and been crazy, 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 and Brazil, you play somebody crazy, which we'll get to. Yes. And, um, and who's the boss? You're not normal, normal. You no. Know. <laughs> uh, can you now go back and do Shakespeare, or do you come on and go, <clears throat> look at this lady Macbeth? And does it work the other way now? Yeah. Well, I think what you have difficulty with is the people that cast. Because, of course, they only remember the last thing you did or yeah. the last joke you did. And they forget all the other serious things. When I first came here, I played all these kind of weepy, work-worn, weary women, you know. And now it's all kind of fast and funny and far out, for cocked women, yeah, I guess yeah. you could say. And uh, now I guess I have to make a struggle to push it back in the other direction some. Now, you've done a lot of uh, groundbreaking. You were one of the first to marry a much younger man. Yes. Yes, and yes. have it work. Yes, so yes. far so good. Well, 12 years. Yeah, well, uh, well, we lived, can I say that? We lived together well, 12 years. On this show? Yes. <laughs> oh, I You're the only one that gets married. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, sure. I forgot. We lived together 12 years when it was not chic at all. And then uh, we got married, and we've been married 12 years. So it's been quite a, a long stretch of time. And so far, so good. He's in the green room, so I guess it's still working out. Well, people like going, oh, oh where'd you have your honeymoon? Disneyland. <laughs> I mean, you get all that. You know, yes, of you know. course, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Because it's so unfair. An older man can marry a young chippy. Oh, sure. And nobody says, anything. you marry a young chippy, and right away, they, they, you know. <laughs> well, of course, what they say, then, you know, there's something degenerate about you. But if it's an older guy, 60, and the girl's 20, they say, oh, wow, wow, look at him, you yeah. know. But, uh... I don't say that it's a panacea, but for us it's worked out. I, having a young husband has been good for me because it's kept me young. Yeah. It's oh. kept me kind of vital. And I think uh, that being young is not so much the facade as being young in your heart and young in your mind. And, and I have a terrific husband. Besides being young, he's a, a great guy, really. Yes. And you live where now, here? Or we just bought a house here in December, and we have a house out in the Hamptons in Long Island. Oh, puff, puff. Oh, puff. And yes. uh, <laughs> things are good. Oh, no, not bad at all. That's, yeah. thank goodness, for TV, huh? What were the worst times you had? When were you really, like, to have a house in the Hamptons, which is so wonderful, which is the best beach, I think, in the world. Yes. And then to live here, which is not what you call share bed. No, it isn't. Do you ever say, I remember when I was living on ketchup soup? Oh, oh do I? I remember yeah. when I lived in the Bowery and when I lived in Hell's Kitchen. And I remember one time when I had to have a job as a bunny rabbit. 
to give out candy because I was had not had an acting job in so long, so they put these ears on me, painted my face, and can you imagine in New York giving candy to the kids who are saying, get out of here, what are you after? I know you, my mother told me about people like, get away from me, I kick you in the shins. That, that was a bad year. That was your bad yeah. year. <laughs> Tell me about Brazil, because you talk, you play a woman who's, we used to, very, very old, it keeps getting yes, yes. faceless. She, she starts out in her 70s. By the end of the movie, she looks 20, and she no longer speaks to her son because he's much too old to be caught with. Right. And in this, we're going to see a little clip. We'll see a clip. And in this, you see uh, kind of like the plastic surgery of the future, where everything is pinched, tucked, pulled, and kind of pulled together again to make a person look younger and younger and younger. And in this particular scene, I have a mask on, of course, which you'll see uh, the doctor is giving me tips on how he's going to make me look younger than ever. Okay, let's find this from Brazil. Here we go. Just try and relax, Mrs. Lowry. Hmm. <laughs> what was that? They, what was it they put all over your face? Well, that was a prosthetic mask, and they made a hard mask uh, months in advance, and then. They had many, many of these rubber masks that went all around the whole face, under the chin, down into here. It took four hours to put it on oh. and an hour to take it off. And after about the third day, my face was a mess. It was all red. And I said, I have a wonderful idea, Terry Gilliam, who's the director. I said, why don't we just take this face I've got right here, pull it back, <laughs> and use it today because my, the one I've got's falling off. Uh, no, no, no. But I think... If that could really be, wouldn't that be great? Just wrap yourself in saran wrap for a minute. Wrap, yeah. You come out and you're 10 years I'm, younger. I may try that. I will try anything. You like, and me both. Uh, anything. <laughs> Give me the pill. I'll That's take it. it. Uh, we'll be right back at this message of interest. So please stay tuned.